What's up, guys? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. I've gotten so many questions about this particular question here and what's an open system, what's a closed system, all that. So I want to go through exactly what an open and closed system is and then re-explain parts A, B, and C for this question. And hopefully you'll have a much better grasp on exactly what an open and a closed system is. And also how to answer these three questions that ask about the total mechanical energy. So first I want to talk exactly about what an open and closed system is. And I cannot take credit for this sheet. This came from one of my awesome colleagues, Mrs. Kelly. So Mrs. Kelly, if you see this, thank you so much for this sheet. Pretty much simplifies everything you need to know about open and closed systems. So first and foremost, a closed system, there is no external forces acting on the system and energy and momentum are going to be conserved. So what they're going to do is they're going to tell you what's a part of the system. Is it a block? Is it a block in a spring? Is it a block in earth? They are going to tell you what it is and you draw those objects as we're going to see when you draw those objects, you put a box around them and if any other forces are coming from outside the system, then you know it is not closed because an open system, there are outside forces. This is super important. There's outside forces that are going to act on the system and they're going to do work to the system. And when they do so, the energy is going to change by the amount of work that is done. Now that work can be positive or negative depending on the direction that that force is acting. If that force is acting in the direction of the motion, it's going to do positive work. Right, So if I have a box that's moving this way and I push it with some force, it, kinetic energy is going to increase if this is a net force that's increasing it. So therefore, it does positive work. But if I'm moving this way and I'm pushing this way, I'm going to do negative work to the system. Okay, So when we're, what you need to know is when, the, when we have a closed system, there's no outside uh, forces and energy and momentum can be conserved. All right, So that means that mechanical energy will not change. But when we have an open system and there's going to be some forces interacting with the masses inside that particular system, yeah, the energy is going to change by the amount of work and the momentum is going to change by an outside force. So we look and say, okay, well, we have some outside force that does work and it also acts for some amount of time, which changes its momentum. And to determine whether it's open or closed, like I said, we just define the system. They're going to tell you what is in the system. This is a ramp block earth system. This is an object. This is an object with a spring. We're going to see all these things. And here's the type of things they're going to show you. So we have a system, a single object system. The system consists of only a single object. Any force that acts externally will change the energy and the momentum of the system. And that's what we saw in part A of that question. We just had a block. It said the block system. Right, So if I draw my barrier around here, I say, okay, well, we were just the block. Was there anything that acted from the outside onto the single object? And it was, yeah, we had the spring that acted up this way. And we also had the force due to gravity that was doing this way. But the thing sped up in this direction of motion. Therefore, kinetic energy increased this way. So that means the mechanical energy increased. And I'm going to show you that once again in just a second. When we have an earth object system, then anything outside the system that can act on this object is no good and it's going to change the total mechanical energy. And guys, remember, we define mechanical energy as just the sum of the kinetic energies and the potential energies. So for example, if I have an object that's in free fall, right, and I define it as just the object... Gravity does positive work, so the mechanical energy is going to increase. But if I now say that I have an earth block system, right? well, now I'm inside the system. This is closed. The force of gravity is inside the, the system, so now mechanical energy remains the same. There's nothing acting from the outside. And as it says on the reference table, we are going to neglect friction, air friction, unless otherwise noted. Now, for a multi-object system like collisions or explosions or like we just saw with springs and gravity acting on the same object, it's all going to depend on how we define our system. Miss Kelly was awesome and she threw in some spring, uh, some strings as well, guys. Strings are tension forces. So if that string is is said to be inside the system, then everything's going to be conserved and it's going to be closed. And guys, as far as friction, friction is a non-conservative force. 
And when we say a conservative force or a non-conservative force, a conservative force only depends on the initial and the final position. And they store potential energies. For example, gravity. It does not matter the path you take to the top of the hill. When you get up there, all it cared about was X initial and X final. It did not care about the path when you're solving for mg delta h. It is a conservative force. The same thing with the spring. It doesn't matter if you have a spring, how much you stretch or compress it. It only cares about where did you start and where did you finish? It doesn't matter if you push it back and forth and back and forth. It's just where you start and finish. That's what we mean by a conservative force. Friction, if I go back and forth, energy gets dissipated out in the form of friction. So this is a non-conservative force. It cares how much you move. So a good rule of thumb to know is that friction always takes away energy from the system unless we say that that surface is included in the system. So now let's go back to the A, B, and C and see if this sheet helps us understand how to answer these questions. All right, so it says the student releases the block. Consider the time during the block is moving upwards to its equilibrium position and the spring length is still lower than L2. So in all three of these, the object is going to be accelerating upwards due to the restoring force of the spring. So the motion of the block is upward. And that's really important to determine if we're going to do positive or negative work. Remember, if I go with it, that's going to be positive work. If I go against it, that is going to be negative work. And don't confuse energies and forces. Forces do work which change energy. So here we want to know how does the total mechanical energy change with these systems? All right, are they considered open and closed systems or not? So in system A, they say the block. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the system that they want me to draw. And then I'm going to draw a little dotted boundary around it and say everything inside the box is in the system. Everything out here is not a part of the system. Then I ask myself one simple question. Are there any forces acting on this box? And we know that there is a force due to gravity. That came from the earth way down here. And there was a force from the spring that originated from some stretch way up here at the ceiling. So then I say to myself, oh, wow, both of these are outside of the system. So this is an open system. Then I ask myself, is this force increasing the kinetic energy, increasing the sum, or decreasing? So now that I know that the system is open, I know it's not going to remain constant. So it can't be constant. Then I think about, will these forces change the mechanical energy in a positive way or a negative way. Now these two forces are both acting outside and they are going to create a net force that is acting on the box. So we have to look at what the net force is going to do. The net force is going to accelerate the box upward. So the net force is with the direction of the motion. Therefore, mechanical energy of the system is going to be increased. Let's go through the same exact process now for the block and the spring. Now I'm going to draw the two things that they've identified in my system. I have the block and then I have the spring. Okay. Then I'm going to draw my boundary around the system that they have defined for me. Then I'm going to ask myself, what forces are acting on this box? We have this force here, which is inside the system. So this is conserved. So this force, since it's inside, it won't change mechanical energy because inside the system, mechanical energy remains constant. It's conserved. But we cannot forget that there is also the force of gravity that's acting on this box outside the system. So this outside force is going to change ME. Remember, the motion is this way. Does the force of gravity aid the motion or hurt the motion? It goes opposite. So this is going to do negative work. Therefore, the total mechanical energy of the system is going to decrease because of the negative work done 
by a force outside the system. We do not care about this spring force and what it does to the mechanical energy because it's inside the system. So for the last one, now we have block. And now we have earth. I draw this. And then I draw, are there any forces acting on the system? Well, we have FG, but once again, this is internal. So there's no change to mechanical energy because this is inside our system, right? So I have this force, though, of the spring that acts from the outside. And this is with the motion. So this is going to give positive work to the system. And work is defined as a change in energy. So if we do positive work, we are going to increase the mechanical energy of the system. So in all three of these scenarios, we have open systems. This is an open system, this is an open system, and this is an open system. Now there was a problem very similar to this that was posed last year. And for system three, it said block, spring, earth. If I did block and I had earth and I had spring and I did my uh, system boundary around it and I asked myself, what are the forces acting on this block? I would say this is internal. This is internal. Therefore, there are no outside forces. And in this case, and in this case only, mechanical energy would stay constant. All right, guys, I know it's midnight. I'm going to get this out. I am so pumped. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, guys. Thank you for helping me spread the message and help as many kids. I cannot explain to you how satisfying it is and how motivating it is for me to not sleep and get these videos out for you. You guys are grinding. I'm grinding. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I'll get you more solutions tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.